In this video, we're going to be continuing with Tanya Reynolds's and Roy Ballmeister's Man Up and Take It study, as the results appear to shed light on an issue that men cannot pick themselves up by their bootstraps out of, and as such, needs to be addressed. This is women's implicit or in-group bias. There exists a significant double standard wherein we are quick to help women with any complaint they may put forward, but in the case of men, men and women alike will place the onus of any problem, even one they have no control over, on men. Now, I'm not a fan of the word victim, but by definition, this is victim blaming in certain situations. It's sink or swim, no matter what. Men and women as well engage in making excuses for normalizing and asserting that men display the same adverse behaviors commonly engaged in by women as some form of useful rebuttal. Even going back to 1908 with Ernest Belfort Bax, he emphasizes with regard to the subject of hysteria that the typical female response of the day was to state, oh, men can also suffer from hysteria. Quite obviously, things haven't changed much since then. But getting back to the research, in part five out of the total six parts of the study, comment below if you want me to cover part six as well, the authors had 403 Canadian participants evaluate a scenario wherein a manufacturing company's senior management team laid off nine of its employees in order to not lose money. Through this scenario, in making the laid off employees all male or female, and in considering men's historical breadwinner role, as well as previous research findings showing a strong link between a precarious employment situation and depression in men, the authors wanted to test if it would be men or women who would be perceived as the most affected in this situation. So how did they test this? Well, after being presented with the scenario of only men or women losing their jobs, they were asked to rate the following. One, victimhood. The women or men who were laid off are not victims. Two, victim pain. How much pain, whether it is psychological, emotional, or physical, do you think the women or men who were laid off experience as a group? Three, harm inflicted. How much harm do you think the management team inflicted on the group of women or men they laid off? Four, fairness. I believe the women or men have been treated fairly. 5. Managers' morality. How moral do you think the senior management team at Jarvis Manufacturing is? And 6. Management team's gender composition. Do you think the management team who decide to make the layoffs is all men, all women, a mix of men and women? The results were mostly in line with the authors' predictions, and likely yours as well. For number one regarding whether laid-off employees were perceived as not being victims, Participants' perceptions did not differ whether they were male or female. Next was how much pain participants perceived the employees' experience, and predictably, it was the female employees who were thought to experience more pain. Thoughts on harm inflicted followed the same trend. Naturally, if female employees were thought to experience more pain, it would be thought that the management team inflicted more harm on them. In the case of fairness as well, although to a lesser extent, Participants still perceive the female employees to be treated less fairly. Number five, testing if a management team would be perceived of as more or less moral whether they fired men or women. Predictably, the team was found to be significantly less moral when they fired only women. In line with previous findings on women's implicit or in-group bias, as well as men's propensity to be more balanced, when participants' answers were separated by sex, while female participants thought management was less moral specifically when other women were laid off, men's perceptions of management did not change regardless of whether it was men or women who were fired. The composition of management's gender, although to a not-so-significant extent, was in line with what you may predict. An all-male management team was suspected by 49.5% of participants when only female employees were fired, whereas, in the case of male employees, this went down to 41.9%. Going even further, the authors form an additional hypothesis that between an all-male management team and one consisting of men and women, the form will be perceived of as less moral, and this is exactly what they found. The 49.5% of participants who suspected an all-male management team firing only women found the team to be less moral, while participants who suspected management to consist of men and women 
did not change in their perception of management's morality, whether they fired men or women. The bias here is rather telling, and this last finding puts into perspective what I, as well as other content producers, have talked about regarding women producing content on men's issues. As the authors state, this pattern should be interpreted with caution because it was correlational and not manipulated, i.e. participants assumed the managerial team's gender composition, but it nonetheless has important implications for organizations. For example, perhaps the presence of female leaders making decisions that harm women can insulate managerial teams from hostile criticism or judgments of immorality. Although this may be true, in a statement such as this would likely be adopted in order to put more women in positions of power, there would need to be an unbiased system of checks and balances in place as, and considering these findings, along with the wealth of research pointing to how strong women's in-group bias is, one may question whether these women would implement decisions that harm women to begin with. This is the state of affairs that has long been acknowledged by MRAs, pill content creators, and people in the manosphere in general. Not only is it the case that a woman stating the same thing as a man is accepted more, in particular by other women and likely due in part to their ingrid bias, but they also likely due in part to their neotis traits, ultimately end up with exponentially more viewership. This is just in the realm of content creation, but our bias in favor of women is an issue that seemingly permeates every facet of society. This is the reality we live in.